This is Maureen from Quarantine, and I am talking about sobriety today. Uh, It's something that obviously is exceedingly important and the very foundation of which I believe uh, we must come from, that place of being clean and sober and going out from there with that authenticity and knowing that indeed uh, sobriety is uh, for those that can uh, do things in moderation uh, from circa 1400 it was moderation in indulgence so even the word indulgence if one could do that and not everyone can uh, so uh, it's uh, there is an old uh, French word sobriety which in any language is a state of being sober in other words not intoxicated although I think it's okay to be intoxicated if you will by life in the best of ways just in love with life as in nature natural organic all things beautiful and and natural sobriety again moderation moderation so uh, it's important to know one's limitations with regard to especially alcohol and drugs so uh, the word has been around for quite some time and uh, sober uh, is uh, that is steadiness and gravity is another word for it gravity uh, with regard to sober and sobriety Let me think of being grounded, gravity, being right here and right now. And that's recorded from the 1540s, being grounded in the present moment. Very, very important. And sobriety is also considered to be the natural state of a human being given at birth. Wow. The natural state of being given at birth. And so that's, again, that sense of being pure, being cleansed without uh, the drugs. And the alcohol is a drug. So uh, being truly present with one's very birth. And so... Again, that's that natural, organic state of being. Uh, in, it, it implies uh, achieving balance, if you will. It's that balance. And it's funny, that came to me uh, recently on one of my walks, a Moody Blues song, of course, uh, a question of balance, because I was really questioning it. What is balance? And if one can maintain their balance, there are those that can have a sip or two of wine and that's it. But for uh, the addictive personality and those who are way overindulging, uh, and may I add in here that the overindulgence comes from the dis-ease of alcoholism, Thus, it's not a a you-are-bad scenario, getting good. It's a a you-are-sick, getting well. And this is exceedingly important to know going in that it is. Uh, The American Medical Association has declared it a disease, and it is hereditary. And if one but looks, one can see that if it is in one's uh, family. But here's the grand and glorious news, is that there is indeed a solution. There is an answer. Most don't have that moderation. So for that, uh, that calls for the life force to step in and help those who are suffering from, and so many in the world suffering from drug addiction and alcoholism, and it's touched everybody's lives in one way or another, uh, or through a relative, or through a friend, a neighbor, in the workplace, um, and it's it's a global thing. It's around the world, and uh, and of course, if a practicing alcoholic decided to take up residence on another planet, somehow a good alcoholic practicing would find a way to uh, make sure they had their drug or their alcohol, and that's the nature of that beast. And it is a beast, the disease of alcoholism.
It's that sense of uh, ism. And ism is I self me. So when we think of that, it's about, interestingly enough, the juxtaposition and the irony is to get out of I self and me that ism in order to achieve uh, that uh, foundation of sobriety, of being clean and sober as the day one was born. How cool is that? Uh, and so again, it's, it's, not, it's not found in some particular place. Uh, we all know love is everywhere. And so it's that language of the heart that guides us uh, because there is that mercurial essence that must take over in this place, uh, in this quantum field of uh, life force, a power greater than ourselves in this beautiful world, that zone that we tap into when we get out of ego. And that's that force that allows us, It's even if we just have a a mustard seed of uh, that beautiful place of I optimism to say, oh, wow, okay, let me get out of myself and into this zone called love. It's very simple when we're not philosophizing, intellectualizing, and analyzing and scrutinizing it because, again, it's about breathing it in, in the moment, and trusting this, that it's this language of the heart in us, again, not out there. And that we're guided, again, when we open our hearts up, even just a little bit, have that little mustard seed uh, to say, okay, let me accept that I'm not ruling the world and no one is ruling the world and that there is this life force, whatever you want to call it, this power greater than ourselves, this quantum field, this energy, this beautiful chi, if you will, and it's simply called love. That keeps it real simple because it's important to keep it simple in order to attain that foundation, that gravity, that place of sobriety. And so it's not, the answer's not in a, a bottle or a pill, uh, and it's not in some judgment of holier than thou pointing the finger in this particular building you show up and the answer's there. It doesn't work that way either. Uh, and there is not this sense of uh, a guru out there. Again, it's a creative life force. And I always say, imagine, imagine what could be done sober because so many people again are in great great pain and and or they're just or sometimes it's the other way around they're so happy they that they're so ecstatic that they drink or take a drug so it's that whatever it is that takes over that just that's their go to so and they sometimes can continue to do whatever it is they're doing in the workplace or in the quote creative zone but again i always say imagine what they could do if they were sober, if they had sobriety and could really come from that place of being as cleansed. And I love that that definition as uh, the day we were born. Isn't that kind of cool? The natural state of a human being given at birth. And again, so it's not that uh, uh, question of if you're intelligent, then you can get this thing, or if you're wealthy, or if you're religious, you can get it, because the bottom line is, is it, that's the opposite of what it is. It's, it's not, we, we mustn't, it's, it's a great thing to be intelligent, but we mustn't think too much about it, because then again, we're in ego, and we're analyzing and thinking, thinking, We can think our way into sobriety, think our way into the foundation, and it is the opposite of that. So uh, there's, there's again, some uh, juxtapositions going on with the word even think because you have to think it through in order to know it's not what you want to do, but then you have to let go of those thoughts and that analyzing and turn it over again and turn it over again to this life force because the bottom line is that the life force, that that force for good in the world is real. It's real. It's not woo-woo. And, and when one's intentions are to be sober and to be clean, and one is coming from the heart, it's got to be from the heart. It's got to be real. I always say that. Got to be real. 
got to be from the heart and say it again. It's not a head thing. And it's that heart and soul, language of the heart that we speak. And then what comes from the heart will indeed reach the heart and the heart of that love and that life force, that soul in the world, that beautiful energy, which we're all tapped into in the quantum field, in the in the zone. And I know there's a lot of people here uh, suffering in quarantine and a lot of uh, drinking going on and a lot of pain and all kinds of abuse and dangerous scenarios. There was a, a... a horrible car chase just shown, shown uh, and uh, there's always, we look back and go, oh wow, uh, look at what happened in that scenario with this uh, driving uh, under the influence and uh, all those things that happen. We don't need to get into it, all the negativity that takes place and the tragedies that occur that didn't have to because of drugs and alcohol. And so I never preach about sobriety, but I do share about the foundation and the infinite possibilities uh, that indeed there is a solution because, uh, you know, it's one thing to lead the horse to water, but uh, it's it, then it's up to one to drink the water. So, uh, but they can't drink the water if they don't know where it is. And so uh, it's that sense of, again, going back to the heart, back to the soul, and, and this is done moment to moment, moment to moment, mustard seed of, of that optimism there to open up for the life force, back to the moment, and it's just a day by day thing, day by day, day by day as the song goes, day by day. Day by day, and that's the other thing, too, to remember the music in you, your own regular rhythm. Again, that natural, organic essence from the day we were born. I love that childlike essence because that's the uh, part that reaches out. It's that beautiful world, uh, looking at the world through the eyes of a child. And again, just one day at a time, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to live. And and that's where peace lives and, and authenticity and truth and justice and all the good things in life. And it's it's got to have a foundation. It's got to be grounded. Uh, nothing flighty about it. It's got that, that again, that gravity of, of uh, the foundation of sobriety. And uh, no amount of money is going to fix it. Uh, no outside force whatsoever in terms of the material world. Uh, again, it's the life force, which is different, and it's the love force. And that we find within, and we tap into it in others. But it's not in uh, those things that perhaps others might think they are. In other words, money, property, prestige. This, the Life is beautiful, and, and, and granted, those things are, can be a blast when there is that foundation. Uh, and then there's even more gratitude for that good life. And so it's nothing against that, but it's the answer. That's putting the horse before the carriage. And so while the entire process is all about keeping it simple and love, we each are guided individually, and everybody's got their own uh, life force. In other words, it doesn't have to be exactly uh, the way somebody else does sobriety. The main thing is it's done with love, and and sometimes it's somebody uh, gets the seed planted through an individual, and, and it just takes one person to plant that seed and suddenly mountains are moved and the life force can work through us when we're tapped in and it becomes again uh, it can be life saving by planting these seeds by being true to ourselves and knowing that each scenario is different but you never know uh, the difference one can make and then we're guided to know when we speak up and when to be silent and to again allow to get ego out of the way and not as a celebration of self but a sense of, okay, let's celebrate this life for us and let's get out there and be of service. It's about, again, taking it back, keeping it simple to the foundation. And so uh, the only way to stay sober and sane and happy, again, is to gather all of that that love, and then we do the self-care, and it's within us, and from that place, the really cool thing, 
And the best way to keep this beautiful place of being clean and sober and having sobriety and and a beautiful uh, optimism and life force is to be of service. And again, to oneself and as well as wherever we're guided. And we are guided after many, many years, especially it's a muscle that is worked and there's a knowledge and, and there it takes over. The infinite possibilities just take over and here we are. And it's a sense of knowing it's not me, my ego, my plan. It's uh, that uh, we're, we're guided and via the light, not a uh, sense of woe is me or uh, hey, look at me, more of how can I be of service? How can I help? What do we do with our experience, strength, and hope? And right here and right now. And ain't nobody's business. Ain't nobody's business. What they think of you. I love that expression. It's nobody's business what they think of you. It's not. And it's nobody's business. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) See what I just did there? (laughs) It's not my business either what you think of me. So I like that too. (laughs) And that's the really cool thing you finally learn. Don't take ourselves so seriously because we know how serious it all is because of the gravity of the whole scenario. And yes, we're in quarantine and yes, suffering in the world, but there's peace in knowing that there is that real cool purity from the day we were born and it and it never ever leaves you in fact it's only enhanced when we do that what we were talking about with the self care and then we're better equipped to care for others and especially our children they get it and again it's about keeping it simple be of service and I'll tell you what it is a lot easier to be guided through truth and love and under some crazy influence of uh, drugs and alcohol. And uh, so one cannot possibly be present in the moment and nor authentic uh, when one is, there's a reason why they call it under the influence. And I'm talking about, again, the uh, addictive personalities and the the drug and alcohol scenario. Not uh, uh, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not talking about people that are required uh, under doctor's care who've had several opinions and they know they're under doctor's care and, and required to take certain things. So that ain't my business. So I'm uh, talking about the business of love and, and sobriety. And many people uh, are... Uh, in that zone of saying, oh, well, they don't necessarily know where to go or how, the how. Uh, and and uh, I've heard it uh, said the how of it is the honesty, the honesty. And even the word honest, honest with oneself and that open-mindedness to be, again, even that little mustard seed of just, okay, all right, let me just be open maybe just a little bit because, you know, it's, it's okay to be a little cynical from time to time. And I think, because I think the true dreamers are really the true cynics. Uh, I'll say we because we are the ones who have had the huge dreams and maybe they've been crushed. So there's a bit of cynicism there. And then, but it it's even easier then to go, okay, let's remember the dreamer in us because it's not just a dream, it's a vision and a vision for that beautiful world. And yes, yes, as Gandhi said, yes, let it begin with me, not from ego, but from love. Yes, indeed, that is how it works. And again, be willing. That's the willingness of it all. And so with that, there are tools, there is action that is required. And again, it starts in this moment. And, you know, the addictive personality always wants more and more. I've heard it said, too. Somebody said they looked out over the entire ocean, and and their first thought is, wow, if that were all gone and that were all, let's say, their drug of choice, whatever that was, 
where in the world would they get their next one? And that's the mindset. So it's that thing that goes on in the mind that always needing or requiring more, a disease of more, dis-ease, if you will, not at ease. So how do we become at ease? And so, uh, again, it's not about the more, it's about the ease, the peace within. It's peaceful. It's a very peaceful place. And it's, it's uh, just f- f- pretty simply filling oneself up with love. Filling oneself up with love. And it's a daily, daily thing, a daily reprieve, right? Fill yourself up with love. How do we do that? And what is love? And again, it's all that beautiful energy, that life force in the world. And and words, we can call it whatever we want. But when we feel it, we know it. We don't. It's believe. We know it. And uh, and we, we grow to trust it because as the days turn to years and the years go by, you know it's working and that it is real and that muscle has become strengthened. And with that, it's never a uh, sense of, woo, we're f- flying off into, the, into uh, the sunset here. It's we're still grounded doing the uh, work daily and taking the right action daily. And so it's this, again, we fill ourselves up with the creative energy too. It's very creative and, and it's uh, not those outside things. It's the breathing it in, breathing it in, and even uh, saying it, feeling it, the love, whatever that is. And it's not no amount of food or money or whatever one thinks of that will fix it. Uh, again, all that outside stuff. And so the what will do it is applying the seat of the pants to the seat of the chair or what have you in the moment and sitting down and taking a moment to go to that place and come from the heart. And because we're all unique, uh, we don't all always apply the seat of the pants to the seat of the chair initially. And in my case, I did like to run. I still like to run and walk and get out in nature and and, uh, swim. And so we each get to be true to our own uniqueness. And this is very important to let ourselves be guided. And so I know when I first happened upon this gorgeous journey, uh, that's how I rolled. And so I continue to do that. We uh, march to our own drum, guided by love. And oftentimes love guides us to other people and there is a love-filled message and it's for us. And we listen. We keep listening. And in my own case, I did indeed, as they say, I, I, I uh, put, what do they say, put cotton in your ears. And no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, it was basically shut up and listen. And and I know that sounds abrupt, but I have a sense of humor about it. And I was silent, not silent, but I did listen. And to the point now where I I uh, maintain my voice and speak when I'm guided. And uh, my sister even said, this podcast, it's my turn to speak, should even be called Shut Up and Listen. And I love it. And isn't it such a beautiful thing that we are given our voice back in sobriety, our true voice. And so for me, I had to listen to a lot of uh, others and perhaps they were rambling at times but I did I heard the message and I love the expression listen for the similarities not the differences just listen for the similarities and that's the message that's the love and that's where I'm coming from too I'm guided as to what to say here And I think if I didn't speak on this topic in particular, but it would be a sense of uh, not owning the beauty in the world and the gift that's been given to me through love and a, a sense of false pride, if you will, or even false humility. 
because it's a sense of, uh, again, owning our own uniqueness and being true to ourselves. And again, when we're on the path long enough, we know it's not a celebration of self, but a celebration of life. And none of us are clones. We're each individuals and we're each unique. And so we don't have to explain love. We just, again, to thine own self be true. And we keep it really, really simple without uh, scrutinizing and analyzing, but to simply be. Be. And then be, to just be, just be, and then let it go. Let it go, and thoughts come and go, and just let it go, or if the cynicism crops up, or the judgment, or the sort of, you know, that, that sense of what in the world is going on, let it go, let it go again, let it go, let it go. And even the silliness factor, embrace it. Just embrace it, and if it feels good, and uh, it's it's just it's so much easier too uh, when we continuously let all negativity go and and release all negative uh, people or, or abusers and uh, people who are fil- filled with insults and and anger and they want to terrorize and brutalize and uh, insult uh, one and. And I only mention this because it is a reality and that, no, you're not going crazy when you take a double take and go, wait a minute, did that person really behave that badly? Yes, people uh, often do. And so it's about knowing that not everybody is singing our song of love, but that we indeed are made strong by life force. And while there are those who are in denial uh, and say, oh no, I've never come across that, no no darkness, no weirdness, no mean people, uh, I'm here here to acknowledge that indeed yes it, it exists and there's a people do behave very badly and it's horrible horrifying absolutely horrifying and we have none of it and again they're very sad sad uh, individuals out there and so we let them go uh, and again forgiveness is key but to not allow that into our space this place is sacred uh, where we live again as the day that we were born that natural organic beauty that life force within and to cherish that embrace that and then let go all the darkness let go the negativity and listen to beautiful, beautiful, like-minded spirits and hearts and souls and music and, and be around creative, beautiful energy. That's the solution. That's the life force. And that enables one to stay clean and sober. And because when we're coming from that place, if we're out searching for it, it's, 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 a, it's a sort of a sense of saying one is lost. But when we've heard the expression, we find ourselves, we realize that that love has always been within ourselves. That answer is in the answer. And so let it go again. And we address life sober. Doesn't mean it's not painful. Doesn't mean people still, whatever, misbehave, if you will, uh, But it's much easier sober. And so, again, there's nothing cute about a drunk or an addict. Nothing funny. And it's actually quite, quite sad and heartbreaking and tragic. And when we do understand this, uh, and we educate the kids at at an early age that it's not funny and it's not cute, uh, and then we'll see less people laughing at the alcoholic addict on the street and other places, uh, again, because it's a disease. And again, that disease, uncomfortability, not at ease. And so of alcoholism, it's, it's not a joke, this disease of alcoholism. Um, no joke. So it's, it's really, truly life and death that we're talking about here. Nothing funny about it. And very, very, very very serious and sober, sober, the gravity of it all, if you will, the gravity of it all. 
And so, again, uh, nothing funny at all about anyone stumbling at any age, stumbling under the influence. There, We see people stumbling down the street and we see others laughing at them, or we see them get behind the wheel of a car, and the reality is uh, we'll, we won't go there. We know what not only can happen, but what has happened, and sadly, again, is going on, and it's a worldwide uh, epidemic as well alcoholism and and must be addressed and the only place to come from when addressing this is with love that is the solution and it's in this moment right here right now right now and it's always again here we are in quarantine people are thinking and we've seen it on the news they're stocking up on all these bottles of alcohol and they're laughing and the news reporters are laughing and saying oh isn't that funny and they're laughing saying this is the only way I'll make it through and it makes one wonder uh, you know if indeed they are making it through Um, And so, again, this isn't from a place of judgment, no holier than thou. It's a place of uh, reality check. And we remind one another uh, not to enable, not to laugh and say, oh, that's funny. Okay, that's how you're going to make it through. Um, Because, again, it's, it's much easier to walk through whatever it is one's going through sober rather than attempting to sidestep it. Uh, with some drug or with alcohol. And again, that only exacerbates the issue and, if anything, makes matters worse and, uh, more often than not, very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. So perhaps when we see others laughing uh, at the, uh, quote, drunk whether they're on the street or wherever they are, uh, the Ritz-Carlton, it doesn't matter. Nothing funny, nothing cute about it, and we remind one another that uh, perhaps if you're, quote, laughing with them, uh, you're enabling them into the grave, especially if they have that disease of alcoholism and drug addiction. Again, it's about enabling them into the grave. So rather than enable, sometimes we got to speak up and tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. And uh, I don't believe in, quote, tough love. I believe in loving people through the tough times and uh, trusting that we're guided and uh, coming from honesty, rigorous honesty. And I also believe if someone's actually seeking help and and working on trying to get better and doing the very best that they can and they're reaching out, then by gosh, let's be there for them. We don't shoot our wounded. So there's been many, many movies uh, about alcoholism addressing this. It's nothing new. And it's happening as we're speaking. So uh, many people suffering right now and under the influence and not knowing. Again, not knowing. And so it's important to uh, gather the information and to always come from love. And it's just come to me full throttle to discuss this and so uh, to share again that there is uh, a place uh, and a foundation by which one can live and be clean and sober and sane and at peace so uh, yeah it's it's there there are places uh, to go and again one can tap in via the internet and there's a lot of 12-step programs too and then one when one is out of um, quarantine too uh, Uh, as well, other meeting places, very easy to find online and on a global scale. And so even in quarantine, there have been some, there's a list of of movies out and a lot of them uh, share the solution in the end. And a lot of them are tragic movies about alcoholism and um, Days of Wine and Roses is one, another one. Uh, And in a lot of these movies, the good news is uh, some of the lead characters do get sober. Uh, But sometimes the ending is tragic. And I always think, oh, wow, if only they could have gotten sober. 
And sometimes it's just there's no rhyme or reason uh, to the disease, and uh, there's only this uh, life force and this sense of sharing and uh, putting out uh, the information in the world that, again, it's for people who want it, not for people who need it, as tragically uh, we see not only in life, uh, you know, but in the movies and, and, again, all over the world. And there's so many classic novels that deal with alcoholism and all the great literature. There's an alcoholic character in so many of the uh, great books of all time. And and again, the uh, works of art we've witnessed and the uh, beautiful artists we know who have died of alcoholism and the singers and songwriters and uh, filmmakers and just so many beautiful movies. And we tend to sometimes romanticize about it. I know I have from time to time and uh, as a fellow artist... and there's nothing romantic about it. I think it's even more romantic approaching life with a clean, clear mind and heart. And we can truly uh, maintain that sense of romance, too, in sobriety. And so much of the great art in the world makes even more sense to me uh, with that clean, clear mindset and the sense of, wow, no, it's not romantic, drugs and alcohol and what people could have done had they uh, found sobriety. And now the movies, uh, we can really look at it. It's a new day and we're in the new millennium and the times, they are a change in as Bob Dylan sang about, they are. And so it's a new renaissance, a revolution in sobriety. And there's so many cool works of art coming out now, and uh, there's a great movie that uh, came out a little while back called Flight really worth watching. Truly recommend this movie. And uh, such a beautiful reality check. And I think Rob Reiner just did a beautiful film with his son, uh, Nick. I believe it's called Being Charlie. And there's so many. And uh, I review the old school black and whites, as my daughter calls them, black and white mama from time to time. And there's some cool old school films as well. I'll Cry Tomorrow is another one, A Star is Born, and Lost Weekend, Uh, My Name is Bill W. is another one, is another one, When a Man Loves a Woman, and of course the story of Francis Farmer and many, many more. Uh, They're uh, movies about uh, drug addiction, alcoholism, and it it just, again, uh, most of us know or have heard of one individual or another, and it's touched our lives, who have had uh, issue with alcohol or drugs. So very, very important to address and not, uh, as they say, uh, not to talk about the pink elephant in the room. So uh, we must address the pink elephant in the room. And so... um, And so, you know, back in the day, the alcoholics, uh, they were put to death, actually, and they were imprisoned and institutionalized. They thought they were insane, and they were given uh, shock therapy and or frontal lobotomies. So uh, today, again, there's an easier, softer way, as they say, or for some, perhaps it's not, Uh, you know, so I, I, and again, I don't judge that, but I want to put it out there that there is a solution, and again, that answer is in the answer. It's not in, uh, you know, whining or, as they say, pour me, pour me, pour me a drink and or singing the blues or everybody coming up with their excuses. And so it's not in pondering the scenario or the situation or, again, philosophizing about it or saying, oh, maybe someday in the future. It's now. The future, as they say, is now. It's now. It's not, oh, but then what about Paris, or or what about the traveling? And the good news is, again, all over the world, there's a a solution, and people staying clean and sober all over the world. So, uh, And one can uh, do everything and do it even better uh, sober. So that's the good news. And it's really, really quite simple. And just let go of one's ego. And we all need that reminder, all of us. No one is better than the other. And and to remind one another, too, uh, in that sense of humility, no ego, uh, to humbly ask for help and, and that that's okay, to let the ego go and let it go again and to know we're human. And we keep saying it over and over again. Re- replace all of that ism, if you will, and that sense of uh, more and more with all the good things in life, and that's okay. And so, again, if one wants it, uh, just simply come from the heart and, and get it and 
get it and keep it simple, as they say. Keep it simple, silly. And so there's many, many tools, but none of them, again, amount to a hill of beans if one doesn't have the, this foundation of being clean and sober and this sober life. Again, it isn't for everyone who needs it. It's got to be wanted more than anything. Got to be primary purpose. Got to want it every single day. One day at a time. One day at a time. That's all. That's simple. Release all the naysayers, all the negative ones, holier than thou ones. Let them go. Let them go. Let it go. The answer isn't in a particular place again or any place other than the love and turning things over to this life force, this love, simple power. It's indeed the most powerful force, so powerful, so pow- in the whole world. And this superpower we're discussing is life-saving. And again, it's not one uh, person that can uh, come to the rescue and save. It's this life force, this love. And I'm not here to convince anyone, but the question is, how do you know you have another one in you? A lot of people don't make it. As we all know, it's like Russian roulette. Anything goes when under the influence. But in sobriety, and I sometimes like to call it slow sobriety because it works and it works slow, slow and easy. Uh, so tap into this life force and, uh, and join us in this glorious sober journey. And reality check, it's not always pink cloud time. I've had moments uh, where the pain has been so great. I thought my heart was physically breaking. But again, a um, great mantra is this too shall pass. And I've also had beautiful moments where I play the music full throttle and life is in session. So, as they say, carpe diem and embrace the love right here, right now. And if you can, even try to smile and say the word love. And even if it feels silly, to remember that kid in you and to cherish uh, that child within. And this is the place to operate from. And this, these are the game changers here. This is, you know, world changers. This is, uh, we're not messing around. Again, this is life and death. We are not messing around. This is where the infinite possibilities are. So I stand very strong in this and I come from this place saying, okay, how can I share my experience, strength, and hope? How can I be of service? I meditate, get my ego out of this. Uh, And no mumbo jumbo rambling on. (laughs) And I know, (laughs) well, from time to time, I know I get... (laughs) A little bit intense, and that's okay because life is intense sometimes. And so, just uh, I just breathe it in, breathe in the love, and replace all negativity with beautiful, even comedy, silliness, creativity, no toxicity. Push it away, gone. Sorry, bye bye, no toxicity, only great vibes here. Only great vibes and love every single day, one moment at a time, one moment at a time. And this life force is real. How cool is that, that it's real? Doesn't cost anything, no money, no, you don't have to beg, borrow, and steal. It's real and it's free. And when you're really in it, it it is fun. It's such a great way uh, to really thrive, not just survive, but to really thrive and always be learning and always be willing every day to, uh, again, to even go and reinvent ourselves again in sobriety, invent ourselves again, and to be guided, oh, okay, oh, this way, oh, there, and then to not even, you know, analyze it or get ego in there, but to, to let it go. And again, with sobriety, one's better able to meditate. I'm a big meditator, and I love being guided and just being still. And the longer I'm on this path, and I'm just, I feel, again, clear as the day I was born, there is real, real, that's the power, that's the love within when we're meditating and we're listening 
and it's so peaceful and it's so quiet and we're guided and it's very, very clear, very clear state of mind right now. And we allow this light in and I'm sending it out right now, whoever's listening all over the world and I thank you. By the way, I see you, baby. I see you. And and I feel you and it's and it's love. And I send that out and I shine that light and it all comes back. That's what the cool thing is. It's we're all tapped into this life force and it's real. And then we allow it in. And when I'm meditating, that's where I'm guided and that light comes in. And it's always there, uh, whether we're driving down the street, wherever we are. But I like to stop and, and then to shine this light. And again, it shows up not just once we're established in our very home and in our very temple, our bodies, and under our own roofs, then we go out from here, and we're guided. And from this place, we create, we're of service, and, and we learn how to be a great parent and, uh, and to be the best that we can be. And this is to be human, too. And then part of this, too, is knowing about forgiveness, gratitude, about learning what it is to apologize and to say, ooh, wait a minute, I'm not perfect, but to be willing and to keep forgiving, keep loving, releasing all the resentments, and to also understand really on new levels as time goes by what gratitude is and forgiveness and again, to let it all go again and to really embrace it and to say, wow, and to forgive oneself. And so one is enabled to forgive oneself and others when we are coming from love. And in that same way, it's easier to forgive others when we have forgiven ourselves. And then that to be grateful. And again, this muscle is being worked and strengthened. The more we work it, we got to work it. We've got to take action. It is about action. That's the solution. And this will allow one to make it through the days and the nights with a clean and sober state of being. No matter what's going on, no matter what, yes, indeed, we're in quarantine. Yes, there is horribleness in the world and the police brutality. And I've seen so much, and it's not easy to tune into the news. There's a lot going on in the world and a lot of tragedies, and I know there's a lot of pain. But we're better equipped to walk through it with that clean state of mind that as a foundation and then all the tools, all these cool tools in our arsenal uh, become our very uh, life force because we're tapped in and we know there. it's like a go-to. Oh, good. Okay. I'm on it. And that there is a solution. This is our solution here. This is our answer. And it's, it's just... It's way, way cool, actually, and 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 because we know it's the light for us, and and then when you know it's real, there's something really beautiful about it. That's wow. And then you even for for me, I, I like I said, I, I look at nature. I look at I'm looking around. We 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 get out of ourselves. Isn't that nice? We're out of ourselves, especially when we're being of service, or even get out of yourself. Look at ocean. Look at the big vastness of the sky and get out of oneself and again there's peace here and or uh, what do they say if you want to be happy go and make someone else happy because so many people are saying well they're drinking because they're not happy or they're drinking because that's not the solution and no judgment again but just to keep loving oneself and and it's funny because you, we make ourselves happy and the child within happy when we're in this beautiful state of mind and just it's kind of just really cool it's a place of authenticity and and all that kindness and love and all the things that are good in the world and uh so 
I, I question anyone who professes otherwise. I just do. I don't, I don't know when they're coming from such negativity over and over and over and over again and bombard one with this fear and this negativity and they're deliberately cruel and hostile and aggressive and, and, and then the abusers. And it's not, again, I say this because we're not in denial that this exists. And uh, indeed, these people, they're just not on the path and perhaps they never will be. And uh, to let them go and let it go as it's toxic, it's exceedingly toxic. And, and they're not likely to be of service in any way other than to attempt to serve themselves. So this is, it's just a crazy merry-go-round for a lot of people. And so the only way off that horrible ride is to stop hurting others, to get the ego out of the way. And to right now, not later, right now, Make a new beginning right now. Right now. And to always, always do the loving thing. And this is true sobriety. It's not just putting down the drink or the drug. It's this way of life. It's, it's the, the genuine sobriety is, is, is love. It's this energy, not, no drinking and no drugging, coupled with this life force of love. And uh, so it's uh, genuine sobriety. It's not unkind and it's not abusive. And genuine sobriety, it's a gentle, very gentle very truthful and caring, caring world in sobriety, very vulnerable. And those, that is the true strength. It's, uh, you can always tell, strong people are always the vulnerable because uh, we're strong enough to know that it's okay to cry from time to time. It's okay, it's okay to be kind. And like-minded individuals sense this, and this is the stuff that saves lives. This is the stuff of life. I think it was Shakespeare that said that. The stuff that dreams are made of. Or was that the Maltese Falcon? Hmm. The stuff that dreams are made of. And that's that beautiful life force. Make it a beautiful vision rather than even just a dream. Make it a gorgeous, gorgeous vision and hold fast to that vision. Stand strong in that foundation of sobriety. And so again, I, I never uh, appreciate anyone who's trying to control or force uh, anybody or myself to do anything. And speaking of control, I should quickly uh, briefly mention the three C's they discuss regarding alcoholism, be it yourself or someone you know. The three C's are you didn't cause it and you can't control it and you certainly can't cure it. And I know for myself, I never ever uh, buy or uh, want to associate with those who are consistently trying to control. Uh, It's just, it's not right. Uh, Because I I tune out when others are throwing their weight around and, and can't get with that mindset. And I don't engage with abusers. It's just too toxic. And it's not good for those uh, on the clean and sober path or, or anyone else on the beautiful life force path. So uh, there's great peace and joy and obviously uh, sobriety in tapping into this force for love in the world. And of course, the ongoing rule is to not pick up. Don't pick up a drink or a drug. It's that simple. And that's no matter what. No matter what. Get out of one's own way. And for me, uh, not just because I'm a parent, but I have always, for many, 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 many years, and uh, 36 years now, choose sobriety. And that's every day. Uh, Every day I have one day at a time. And again, it's not the years, it's not the quantity, it is the quality, and it does work, and that's why I say this, because it's a beautiful, beautiful way to live, just gorgeous, and uh, it's just so um, fulfilling, and again, we don't just get by, but we we learn to really thrive, and we don't need to count how many tragedies might have been avoided had one not been drinking or drugging. And so the bottom line, again, I always take it back to the bottom line, is that we're talking about, and my voice changes because this is where I live, we're talking about life and death. So hear me. We're talking about life and death. 
nothing mumbo jumbo about this. And anyone who thinks otherwise, just step aside, step aside. And that is the life force. And it's okay to have feelings and to know one doesn't have to numb them with drugs or alcohol. It's okay. I love the mantra, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And it's just great to incorporate every day, right here, right now. Because love is the answer. Whatever the question, whatever it is, keep taking it back to the love. That's the answer. Your kid comes to you with whatever it is. Love is the answer. Take it back to that. And then we'll know, wait, does my voice change here? What do I do here? How am I guided here? And again, love will give us that power, that strength, the wherewithal to step it up if need be. And that is that life force that is uh, in that quantum field. And so replace the drinking and the drugging habits with all these beautiful things. There's things to try uh, and uh, great fun to have too with the kids. I try cooking. I love, I'm a vegan and I love doing beautiful, fresh, organic foods and, and it's healthy way of life and exercise, of course, is key in sobriety every day. Do it every day, even a simple stretching or a simple walk. Go out in nature. Nature is a great healer and explore classes. And in quarantine, there's cool, all kinds of classes you can do online, always expanding and learning and growing. Uh, because again, nature abhors a vacuum. So we must fill up all those hours spent drinking and drugging and replace it with all beautiful energy and all that uh, creative uh, juice. It can it can really energize one. So it's a uh, great potential, great potential there and make it work for you. All of that passion and all that angst and even the suffering, it can be great energy to put into creativity. And even anger can be used to be channeled into uh, greatness because it's passion, it's pain, it's power. And rather than being depressive and repressing it, uh, take that passion and put it into the solution and make it work for you. And even if you need to, rock out with it. Go to town with the music, full throttle, sing out loud. Make it work for you. Get in the car. And if need be, maybe yell in the car. Obviously not at people. Uh, But release it. Turn it around. Channel it. And again, creation, not destruction. Check out all these different options online. Take up painting is a cool one. And the other day I delved back into my poetry again, and that's always fun. And I'm sharing some of that with my daughter, some of the great poets, too, uh, to give her that gift to share with uh, her. She's so brilliant and with that academic mind to couple that with that beautiful uh, poetry and to balance it out again, to try to find some semblance of balance in the world and to share that with the kids and beautiful words and emotion. And it's a great place to go, too, to the arts for emotion and the music and uh, and so uh, that's the thing, too, that sometimes we, we, we go away from certain activity is in our uh, lives, and if they're too much emotionally um, at the time, and we can always come back to them. So we'll know we're guided and play some music and or take up an instrument if if need be or if the spirit moves you, so to speak. And music is is great, great uh, healer. And especially find a way to show appreciation for those people around you. That's a cool thing to do, too. And learn to make amends. That's fun. Uh, It can be fun to, wow, make that list and see who, maybe do I owe someone an amends or even on a daily basis. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, did I walk in line before you? And, and I do that. We don't grovel before anyone or we're not subservient, but it's okay to be human and to say, oh, no, go ahead. Uh, and uh, it's actually quite empowering even when we're driving to say, oh, no, I'm sorry. Did I rush in there or was I wrong? And learn to be, again, a great sober parent. Nothing cooler than that, right? Uh, obviously, drinking and parenthood do not go, or drugging and parenthood do not go hand in hand, obviously, or anything uh, with regard to that. And so my daughter's never seen me take a drink or a drug, and I just, not only do I think that's cool, again, I don't say this 
to brag, but I say it to share how beautiful it is to raise a kid uh, in this environment and to share that it's not necessary to drink and especially that, that we are better at whatever it is we're doing when we're sober, especially being a parent. Somebody said something beautiful to me along the way that, of course, I never forgot. She said, Maureen, I can see your sobriety in your daughter's eyes. How beautiful is that? And it's just a a gorgeous journey. Uh, My daughter is on her way now to Ivy League. She's off. My baby girl is off to Ivy League College now. And I say that I I, I love her whether she chooses college or not. But uh, that's uh, all part of the journey here. and, And my job is to be there for her. And rather than sing a song of woe that my little baby angel is is off uh, to college, I, I sing a song of gratitude, and I'm happy for her rather than sad for myself. I've learned now it's all about perspective and perception and just what a gift it all is. And how nice to be able to cry tears of joy and tears of gratitude and to embrace it all and to cherish it all. And it's okay, too, if one's made mistakes. Admit that. Forgive yourself. Forgive. uh, Just keep forgiving. And you admit the faults. We admit it and forgive and move on and do this daily. And it's just a day at a time. That's all. And it's absolutely nobody's business. Again, what you're up to, nobody's business. It's it's not our business. Again, what others think of us. And that's a good one. Steer clear of all those who don't have your best interest at heart. Sadly, those people do exist. And just keep being good to ourselves. And remember, nobody's perfect. And the only perfect thing you can do is to not pick up that drink or drug. And again, this is if you have the uh, issue and the problem, and a lot of people do, or they know someone who does. And it's okay to get in touch with things you want to change about yourself. And this is a great starting place uh, in sobriety. So, so long as you know uh, you can't change others. Can't change others, and it's, it's futile. That's the definition of insanity, as they say, repeating the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So, And that's ego, too, thinking one can change somebody else. So um, uh, one can say, I'd like to work on not getting so angry, perhaps, and we can change that about ourselves, or not being so fearful or anxious or mean or judgmental or whatever it is, jealousy, uh, no gossiping or controlling, materialistic, and, and any uh, darkness or defects we feel we might have to just release them and work on them. And the list does go on. And uh, more is revealed as we go, and that's okay, too. Another great tool is the old-fashioned pen and paper, and it's not a one-time deal. We use these resources daily. Pick up the pen and paper, write down resentments if need be, and then get rid of them by talking to somebody about it. Just release it somehow or another and, and release the anger, release the rage, release the resentment, and then just rip up that piece of paper, get rid of the darkness and, and uh, whatever it is that's bothering one to uh, not hang on to it. And so uh, it's it's a good idea to just throw it away and just uh, write down then gratitude lists every day. It's like fresh water again. Cleanse ourselves daily, refresh ourselves daily with all the good mojo. And this will keep you sober. Love. And it's the most powerful life force in the world. Keep going back to that. Keep going back to it again. And others may hang around with their toxicity. And again, they have uh, their own issues. We have none of that. Make the note and eventually the light shines so bright that, as a friend of mine said recently, those naysayers and those uh, whatever it is with the darkness and the, uh, the those that don't have our best interest at heart, they scurry off into a corner. And then we learn also a great tool is the gift of being able to say again, I'm sorry. And not only I'm sorry, but as I've been known to say even to my daughter from time to time, I'm sorry and I was wrong to say I was wrong. That was wrong if we're wrong. Uh, and if we're not, so be it. We'll be guided. We'll know if we own amends. Back in the day, there was a famous poster, Love Means Never Having to Say You're Sorry. Well, 
Uh, To my way of thinking, because we love, we say we're sorry if we've wronged someone. And because, honestly, it feels good. And uh, I, I feel authentic when I go, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm sorry. And to mean it, not a, not, you know, you can tell by the way somebody says something if they're sorry. I've known people who go, I said I was sorry, and they're yelling. <laughs> and they yell, and you're going, no, you're not. <laughs> so it becomes not just what you're saying, what are you doing? What are you doing with those words? <laughs> So this, again, is where the peace lives. And this peace, it enables one to have a great way to live. Again, sober, and not just sober, but sane in what seems to be, honestly, an insane world sometimes. And to keep replacing the old behavior and just do this one day at a time. And then the years add up, by golly. And so, uh, good news is we're not old timers, we're long timers. I like that. So, we get to be here. I have a friend who sums it up this way. He says, oh, oh, Maureen was just a zygote when she uh, began on this path. She was uh, just a, a child prodigy. And so, of course, we can't take ourselves too seriously. And again, how cool is it that we get to be here? It's all about perception and perspective. And indeed, we are not getting older. We are getting better as we get older. (laughs) All about perspective. And it's all okay. And isn't it nice to know that perhaps we can help where no one else can? because of what we've been through and our experience, strength, and hope. Again, perspective. I get to help. Again, while it is not a race, it's not. It's a process. It's a journey. And enjoy this sacred journey right now. No racing. Again, I go back to the turtle. My sister and I share about the turtle, and we just will send each other out of nowhere a picture of a turtle to remind each other, easy does it, slow it down. Take a breath, and it's good to know, you know? It's good to know. Easy does it slow, steady, no racing, and it's good to know again that it works. And it keeps on working when one is honestly working it. Got to work it. It's, again, action. That key word is honesty. And, of course, you know, being willing to do that footwork and to go and say, I'm sorry to those you've harmed, to continuously strive to go with the force for love in the world and to put one's ego aside. Got to keep doing it every day. So it's just for today. Just for today. Breathe in. Right now. Good energy. And again, give yourself this gift all over the world. Right now, it's precious. Cherish this, this moment. Where are your feet? This clarity, this love. Doesn't mean there won't be painful, excruciatingly painful sometimes, painful days. And uh, that's life too. And I've known, again, excruciating pain in sobriety. And uh, But when we understand that life does break our hearts and that life is filled with loss, a lot of loss sometimes, then we're better equipped to walk through the torturous times. And sometimes I won't, you know, uh, baby step or, or uh, I won't, uh, you know, sugarcoat it that sometimes. Sometimes it does feel torturous, and uh, that's life too. And anyone who says otherwise or who claims that life is always perfect and a day at the beach, well, they ain't dealing in reality. And I do wonder, I wonder what they're selling because uh, this thing is free. And it's all about taking action and doing the footwork. You got to do it. Sometimes the action indeed does require no action. In other words, just sit down, be quiet. Listen, and then let it go. And there's, again, plenty of 12-step meetings around the world, on the Internet. And when one is out again, out of quarantine, again, worldwide directory. So always answers, always solutions. And one can always tap into this place of peace and sobriety via this action, driven by the willingness of honesty and, of course, that open-mindedness. There's... There's no one guru, and I would say run far, far away from someone who claims to be the guru of sobriety or anything else here. 
uh, because there's no one place. Because love, again, is everywhere. And it's good to gather the information and be around like-minded individuals who have worked this and are now into the solution. So that way you know, yeah, we're the real deal. It does. And to, yes, shout it from the rooftops. Yes. Yes, it does work. The good news is share some beautiful energy. And there is an infinite, there are infinite possibilities in sobriety. And it's possible to stay clean and sober. And with this foundation, it's got to be the foundation, the world truly is so much more beautiful. Without this, this, without this foundation of sobriety, none of the other tools amount to a hill of beans. They don't amount to, uh, it, it, they're not, it's shallow, superficial, because there's no gravity, there's no foundation, nothing to build it upon. Got to build it on a strong foundation. And then moving forward, knowing it's all life on life's terms, all of it, uh, it's kind of cool to know that indeed our Worst day sober will always be better than the best day drinking. And one cannot put the horse before the carriage or get it by osmosis. So got to do it, got to go inside and, and take the action. Allow yourself, if you need to, to cry, to feel, to express. Allow yourself to be, to be. Be present and be present for yourself. That's what it is, being present for yourself, and you can be there even more so for the kids and for each other. And sometimes it just takes one little message to fall. Um, I've been doing some planting lately, and when the ground is fertile and the seed is planted, it will bloom and blossom. And sometimes just planting that one seed, saying, hey, uh, let's just put this out there. And then we, we nourish it, we nurture it, we water it every day and let ourselves bloom and blossom and uh, then again, carry this this beautiful message out to others. And we go out from here and nothing, woo again about it. Nothing, nothing. It's real. Very, very strong foundation, which is what I love about it. Uh, I've, I've been around the world and I've seen all kinds of, you know, uh, crazy... <laughs> But this is the real deal. That's the good news. I mean, I won't even get into some of the, you know, thing. And because well, there's nothing worse than contempt prior to investigation, I've checked things out. Uh, and, you know, lo and behold, here we are standing strong and moving steady she goes. And uh, this, again, it works. And again, from my experience, this is not a wonder if this works and it works good as they say. So there's no excuses. Not a competition, again, of who suffered the most. Uh, just simply jumping into sobriety with both feet. That's simple. Keeping it real, real simple. K-I-S-S. Trust in the quantum field of love and not waltzing off into the sunset with a group of people who perhaps are biased in one way or another or, or charging some great sum of money or asking anything else of one because there's no fee. This is for free, again, and fun. And it's just for today. And again, it's important to note that if one is authentically guided to a facility whereby they are charging a fee and one has done their due diligence and has gotten referrals and whatnot, again, we each have our own uh, way of uh, finding where we are guided. So to trust this process of love and know that not one of us has exactly the same path as the other, it's the sense of what is working and if it works, don't fix it. Just for today, no fear. Uh, again, fear is false evidence appearing real. And uh, somebody else said it's forget everything and run. Well, no, we don't have to. We stay here and replace it with love. We keep going. We keep going. Let the demons run. Let the demons go. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, demons. <laughs> Again, we got to keep own our sense of humor too. That's important. Only love. Surround yourself with beauty and great heart and soul. And just be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. 
with sobriety again all these things are possible this language of the heart and we're not alone we're not isn't that cool all over the world we're speaking this language we're speaking this language how cool is that of sobriety we get each other i have uh talked to people on this trip on this journey around the world and it's kind of cool we find each other and and we're tapped in and it's just it's 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 a soul thing. It's a love thing, a heart 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 and soul thing that works, and it's energizing, and that's honestly how it works. Uh, we speak the same language, if you will, and the best way to keep this gift is to continuously being guided, of course, ego aside, as to how one can be of service and carry this gift to others, and that's how we keep it. That's one of the great paradoxes. That's how we keep it. And we'll know. And especially, don't forget your sense of humor. we got to keep going back to that. It's a very important rule, if you will. Allow yourself to be silly, to laugh, be childlike, have fun. Let people say whatever they will. Again, ain't, ain't, ain't our business. And be childlike, be silly. And, of course... Never at the expense of others. I never do that. And, and that's, that's a lower mindset, and that's never funny. That's only sad for those who, who are taking pleasure in humiliating others or whatever they're doing under the guise of, I don't know, comedy. That's not comedy. I love good, clean, wholesome, funny comedy. That's just smart comedy, intelligent, intelligent comedy, sophisticated comedy. And it's out there. There's so many great comics out there. Tap into that. That's such a part of the solution, too. And so many uh, great, uh, you know, alcoholics and addicts who have found their sense of humor and some of the funniest people in the world, honestly. As they say, comedy is tragedy plus time. And so we're all in this uh, lifeboat together. And so what's nice, too, is that we share this common bond. We might be completely different, but there, there's this bond. And it's, again, a healing bond, a life-enhancing bond, and it does indeed, uh, somehow it, it works when uh, one is simply sharing the truth with one another. And it's in this place that there is such a profound camaraderie and life for us and filled with so much laughter and not, be, not again, not at the expense of others. And so we must, those that do laugh at the expense of others, we must not allow them into this sacred, sacred place. And uh, this is where we get to truly laugh and we truly enjoy life. And so in the same way that we learn to laugh, we, it's because we have cried. And uh, like the saying says, teach us to laugh again, but don't ever let us forget that we cried. And uh, we find the balance with the grief. And if we're grief stricken, so be it. We sit down and have ourselves a cry. And it's nobody's business, again, however long it takes for us to move through pain, uh, we do find a way. And so we approach life realistically, knowing that life is lost and that grief uh, is a part of life and that we can indeed walk it through and know that feelings are not facts, uh, but that it is okay to feel and to trust the process and know that we will uh, get through the grief and we will smile again and to uh, know that, like the song goes, to everything there is a season. Walk it through, strengthen ourselves. Here we are. And at the end of the day, simple, say thank you. And then say thank you again. Thank you. And then say it when we awaken. And I thank you for listening. This is Maureen from Quarantine, and I'm signing off just for now. And in keeping with the gratitude, also special thank you, special shout out for my beautiful angel daughter, the Mighty Quinn, for creating for the Maureen from Quarantine podcast, the perfect intro, outro music. Thank you, my angel daughter. I love you. Thank you.